Hi everybody, welcome back to the um, eighth uh, video in my uh, version 2 playlist on physics textbooks. And today we're going to um, try and cover very briefly um, the standard model and beyond, supersymmetry, and string theory. So um, I haven't studied much of these areas. I've done a little bit in each area, and one of my goals is to do more, but quite frankly, my view of um, supersymmetry and string theory is to sort of hold off until I see some experimental confirmation. You know, why waste decades of your life studying something which turns out having nothing to do with nature? We don't know yet, but I'm, uh, I'm a little skeptical, and um, I'm gonna, I think it's useful to study them, but I don't want to spend all my time studying them. So, back in 1982-83, um, when I was working a very boring job in Baltimore, Maryland, as a consulting actuary, I took one of my usual long lunches and went down to the uh, John Hopkins University bookstore, and I came upon this book with this fantastic title, Gauge Theories of the Strong, Weak, and Electromagnetic Interactions. And I bought the... Uh, of course, it was the first edition of the book, and I, to my amazement, I started opening it up, and I, I was able to understand it. You only need a small amount of knowledge of Feynman diagrams and some quantum field theory to really understand this book, but it really gives you a very good outline of gauge theories. Now there, and also of a grand, you know, it ends the last chapter on SU five. Now, there are other books, a lot of other books, which cover the same material, but like I said, in this series I'm focusing on books that I've used. This book was so good that 30 years later, it was republished. You know, it was republished in the second edition in um, 2013. So, um, I highly recommend this book, get the second edition. And uh, this is the book that sent me back into theoretical physics and uh, led me to apply to Caltech and try and get a PhD, which unfortunately did not work out that well for me. But still, this book was a book that renewed my interest in physics. Now, second book, this book I do not recommend buying. This was a book that I got at Caltech when I was doing some kind of paper on lattice gauge theory. This book is way out of date, and la but what I I put it here only because um, lattice gauge theory is an incredibly important topic, and um, I want to see if they listed any other lattice gauge books, but they didn't. Anyway, I highly recommend doing a search on Amazon or Google for lattice gauge theory books. The field has, of course, evolved tremendously with um, super fast computers and everything. And nowadays, uh, they can calculate all the uh, the masses of all the low-lying hadron states on a computer with very little input. And um, I think they even get to the point where they can do interaction calculations. So do get yourself a book on um, lattice gauge theory. It's, um, it's, it's been a hot area for several decades and uh, always making advances and everything. Um... Another book that I bought when I was at Caltech, this was a standard book at the time, was on Grand Unified Theories. Um, it's an excellent book. It's from the Frontiers in Physics collection. Obviously, it's old, but I think it's still valid. And it's an easy uh, introduction into things like SO5, SO10, and supersymmetry. So, even though um, Grand Unified Theories are sort of out of favor nowadays and they haven't been confirmed, I think it's much more likely that, that one day we will find a grand unified theory, at least for particle interactions, and it may be supersymmetric, it may not be, but this is a good book to, uh, you know, it's a useful field to know and to learn. Um, another more recent excellent book by a top-notch physicist, Pierre Ramon, is Journeys Beyond the Standard Model, and Two-thirds of this book is really on an advanced discussion of the standard model from a particle physics point of view and a quantum field theory. He treats the vacuum really well. And then he discusses things like, you know, what if we have neutrino masses? 
What if we have axions, you know, for dark matter? And what if we have supersymmetry? So it, this is a, it's an advanced book, but it's again also in the frontiers in physics mode. And um, it's by a premium author and well worth reading. Um, now, another book that I have, if you're interested in understanding QCD and, per, and doing perturbative calculations in QCD, this was one of the first books that came out on it. Richard Field, I think, was working with Feynman on, on the late, latter part of his career on doing QCD calculations. So this book is a good introduction if you're going to get into like how to do all the calculations that I, that they need to um, to make experimental discoveries at the LHC and everything. This is a start. Okay, now um, no, I don't want to do that first. Um, I've only got one book on supersymmetry. There are many books on supersymmetry, you know, supersymmetry, 1,000 and one ways, famous books that seem totally beyond me, and the, just the notation and everything is unbelievable. This book was sort of like, I got this book, and it's the, the first 140 pages of the book, it's about a 500-page book, is a really excellent treatment of the Lorenz and Poincaré groups and representations. And the only, and it shows every equation and every calculation in detail. And the only problem with the book was it was sort of hand, it was uh, typed and handwritten equations. But they came out with a, a second edition, which I highly recommend. And this one is all latex. And it's a really, um, you know, I'll be honest with you, I never got past the first, um, the first part of the book. Um, the first part of the book is on the Lorenz Poincaré group, SL2C Dirac marijuana spinners. I never really got past that, but it does cover all the rest of supersymmetry. And um, the main thing is I think that it's understandable. So if you want to learn supersymmetry, I think um, this book is a, uh, a good place to start. Um, the other books sort of like are like very, very advanced. Um, when I was at Caltech, um, I remember going to a lecture by John Schwartz on string theory and 10 dimensions and everything. And, and it really started to take off then. This was 84 and I thought that they were crazy. But everybody started and next year I was also taking a course and there was no textbook at the time for string theory. But we were um, urged to get this book. This is a very good history book. It's got all the papers on the first 15 years of superstring theory, two volumes, all the early papers. So if you want to get started and see, you know, you could open up a string theory book and sort of see things completed. But here, if you want to, like, go through the history and see all the original papers, this is an excellent book. Um, to um, get started in for at least the early history from like 70 to 85. Um, now later on, the course that I took, the, the books, oh, I'm sorry, let me backtrack here. The best course for starting string theory, the best book, is by Barton Zyback, who just came out with an excellent quantum mechanics book as well. It's called The First Course in String Theory. This book is very understandable. It's not complete, but the first half of the book is really good as a, and you don't need quantum field theory as a prerequisite for this core, for this book. Of course it helps, but mostly it's just quantum mechanics and relativity, and the first half helps you understand quantum field theory and, and other aspects. So I highly recommend this book to start in string theory. It's certainly easier than all the others, and um, there's an accompanying OCW's course, MIT OCW, um, that was taught by Zybeck and Alan Guth. And there were also lectures. You can go to the uh, perimeter site. He gave 15 lectures on string theory, which I think also parallels the book. So this is sort of like um, a place to start at uh, advanced undergraduate level. Now, the canonical, the first major superstring theory book was by 
Green, Schwartz, and Witten. And um, it's two volumes, and this definitive, and it's still useful today. Um, it obviously doesn't cover all the string theory revolutions since that first one, but this is a good place to start to learn string theory, and um, two volumes. Um, I haven't read it other than like the first chapter of the first volume, but um, one day I hope to, to read it. Now, the definitive books on string theory, I think, um, were written by Joseph Polchinski, who unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. Polchinski thought that he could write this two-volume work in one year, but it ended up taking him ten years. But I think this is the definitive place for work on string theory. They're very difficult, but um, if you want to uh, become a string theorist, you'll probably have to master these books. Volume 1, Volume 2. Another more recent book on string theory, and there are many, they all come out every year. This one, um, I've read a few chapters, and it's by the Becker sisters and John Schwartz. So um, it's about 600 and 700 pages. It's not as detailed as some of the other books, but it does cover like a lot of the recent chapters. You know, it has M theory and everything. It's, um, and it reads well, and they have a lot of worked out examples in the book. So, um, I would, uh, you know, this is another place where you can start with string theory maybe after you've done the first course. Um, you can never see equations when you look at the introductions on Amazon. Um, finally, uh, there's a book, This some people think this is a popular book written by Leonard Susskind, but it's actually a serious book for physicists with equations and everything. It's short, it's about 200 pages, and it covers all this stuff, you know, all the recent developments, even though it was written quite a while ago. I think it was written in 95. Um, well, it says 2004, but I think it was before that. But it covers all the recent developments on the, hologra the holographic universe and black holes and, you know, Maybe it doesn't have quite as much on information as they have nowadays and string theory. And each chapter is um, a short chapter. And he goes through all the essential mathematics. This is like the way Susskind teaches. He, he doesn't um, do detailed calculations. He just shows you, you know, the basics. And then, um, you know, like in one small chapter, you'll learn about black holes. And then the next chapter you'll learn about, you know, holography and various other things. So, um, anyway, this book is, uh, let me see how many pages it is. Yeah, it's only about 180 pages, so well worth reading for a physics student. And even if you can't understand it all, just by reading the words, you'll get a lot about what's happening in advanced areas of uh, high energy particle and, and uh, foundational physics. So um, that's all I have today. Um, next time for my uh, ninth playlist, I'll do um, what little I have on uh, astronomy and cosmology. So I'll, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.